Now tuning in to Earbud Media, audio for everyone. have these like spirit days at school and yeah. I found out today that the one that we're having at the end of this month is meme slash vine day and oh my god Cody I yeah. I honestly I think I just need your help on deciding like what one do I even <laughs> choose you know yeah like yep. <sighs> there's just so many that's true that's true <sighs> So that's my work for the rest of this month is, you know, pause yeah. on everything else. How am I going to go as hard in the paint as I can <laughs> for this spirit day, you know? How do I be every meme? <laughs> yeah, how do I do them all? Do I catch them all? Like, is that what I lean oh into? <laughs> I don't know. That's what's currently on my brain, if I'm being yeah. honest. Uh, what if you do... Free shavakadu and you just yell all day. <laughs> I mean, that's what I do every goddamn day, if I'm being honest. So, I don't know that that would help at all. What if I just carried around a bag of lifesavers? Would that be anything? Oh, my God. If I was just like, yeah, they're lifesavers, you know? They're the, you know? Um, I don't know. I'm going to workshop it. Yeah, but I, I definitely need help. With more yeah, than me. just this, in ju- like I need, <laughs> I need like I I already have professional help, but like I need more help <laughs> always. I have professional help. I have cat help. <laughs> exactly. Like I I always am in need of help, but I just of course. Um, can I do that? I appreciate <sighs> you understanding, like knowing when you need to ask for help. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for, like, that's really brave of yes, you. You know, it's you. hard to do that. It's often the first step. That's <laughs> true. Now, here's the real question. Could I yeah. be the chicken in the red dress? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. If I'm picturing this correctly, <laughs> get a rubber chicken costume. Yes. Like a, chi- like a furry kind of chicken costume. Yeah. Put on a red dress over top of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And just pose. Yeah, and just vote. And just like, yeah. just yeah, stare just lovingly like, up at my mood. Saunter in. <laughs> no, fuck all of this. No, fuck you. <laughs> fuck all of this. No, I know what I have to be. Cody, I have to be the one that speaks to me so much to my soul. I have to be the girl <laughs> that has like her t shirt and shorts on, but then like a dress on top, and she's like, hey, and she's like eating chips. She's like, I want to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> Because I just, it's not even that that is my career goal. It's just like, it's just such a mood. <laughs> just like <laughs> snacking and being like, hey, I want to be famous. <laughs> In case you didn't know. Just let me know. It's <laughs> just my career goals. <laughs> Legitimately, I don't know if you saw this earlier on Twitter, but I, I, we both were like, hey, what if we just don't read this book anymore? <laughs> and someone legitimately was like, you could just become a Vine podcast, which like, <laughs> whoops, we already are. <laughs> yeah, jokes on all of y'all. <laughs> jokes on all of you. Um, Welcome to <laughs> Into the Vine cast, which I don't know if you saw the news, but Cody, Vine is like coming back. They're trying a reboot again. Is that- is that true again? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, V2. Are y'all not tired? <laughs> <laughs> Vine, R.I.P. V2, R.I.P. Gun, but of a gun. Yeah, they're, it's coming back. Died before it made it. <laughs> as, like, bite or something. What? Okay. Yeah. So, um, it's, like, the spring of, uh, 2019. All right. Um. I'm interested. It's a lot of hype. I can't wait to, like... Like, the second I graduate college, I'm like, all right, now to my real career. For real. <laughs> Vine 3. <laughs> the fact that you graduate next year makes me feel like a the goddamn Crypt Keeper. Okay, but you also surround yourself with, like, people who were born a second ago. <laughs> True. 
Like, this is relative. Yeah, but, like... All right. Not to get emo on this podcast, but, like, <laughs> I remember when you weren't graduating college. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is right now. Like, right now? <laughs> Me just standing up at your graduation party. I remember <laughs> when Cody wasn't graduating. <laughs> you just in the back, like, yeah, that was yesterday. <laughs> this is this is Alice when she's throwing that party for, for Bella, and there's like three people there. <laughs> for real. Yep. Exactly. It's like her um, her new birthday party. Not her like actual right. birthday party, but her new birthday party. And um, Alice is like, it's like you were, you know, like, I remember the day you were born. She's like, I was literally, <laughs> like, <laughs> that was yesterday. I'm like, <laughs> that was three hours ago. Cody, how the hell are you doing? I'm great because of one thing. Oh. And? My heat is back on in my apartment. <laughs> Bless up. You know what I mean? It- it stopped. It wasn't working for a long time, which was bad because it's cold. Yes. Um. So that was inconvenient. Yes. It turns out the thermostat just needed batteries in it, and so that was fixed, and now we have heat again. <laughs> Whoa. So look at that. Weird flex. So yeah, but okay, I'm warm, so. <laughs> <laughs> Update on public transportation in your neck of the woods. Have the heaters yeah. been turned on? Uh, yes, they have. Great. They have. Yep, they are in full swing. Great. Wait, hold. You have swinging heaters in your public transportation (laughs) system? That's dangerous. People are just, like, throwing, like, like heating pads and just, like... The fucking last thing I need while getting on public transportation in the morning is to worry about getting concussed by a fucking swinging heater. In Listen, the it's all part of living in the big city, baby. You know, it's just Chicago part of sounds thrill. terrifying. <laughs> Chicago is too rough for me. <laughs> I am not. I literally live in a big city, but that is not the city life that I am made for. <laughs> Jesus. Well, um, how are you doing, my dude? Ooh. Um. Well, I am doing all right. I have a three day weekend. As you're listening to this. Um, wow. So. Weird flex. <laughs> but fuck me. You know what I mean? Like no, a great flex. A very reasonable flex. <laughs> you know. God bless. Or whatever. <laughs> Today I showed my age with my Ooh. students because I explained to them what dial-up internet was. And. Yep, that'll do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they were like, wait, what? <laughs> um, I was like, oh yeah, no, I, I. Put on a YouTube video. I went to go take a shower. I came back and it was halfway loaded. And they were like, what? <laughs> like they, they could not compute. Um, like, I don't um, understand. I also showed them the infamous song, Shoes, by Kelly <gasps> today. You are doing such a service. <laughs> Thank you. You are braver than the Marines. I, I know that. <laughs> you know, I um, mean, and we were saying that on I Veterans mean, Day, so... I, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know. Honestly, nothing but respect for my president. <laughs> I mean, listen, me, the Marines, we're both first responders, so like, you know, I respect all it's of such us. A, it's it's such a gift because honestly, I can't imagine my life without the song "Shoes" being a part of it. Yeah, agreed. That video being a part of my life, like I would just be drift away at sea, mm-hmm. like lost, <laughs> no direction, no cause. <laughs> Yeah, so just know that there are, there was about 90 plus um, 8th graders today that in the hallways were just going, shows. Um, And it was kind of, it was kind of beautiful, actually. Yeah, yep. Um, It did have a- This is why we do the work. (laughs) That's, it's why I wake up every morning, you know? Um, It's moments like me. (laughs) Yep. It did have an academic purpose. We were actually talking about power <laughs> dynamics and stereotypes, but, um, you know, sometimes you just gotta... Even better. I love it. Sometimes you just gotta talk about shows. Yeah. <laughs> the real thing that I want to talk to you about today is a tremendous crime that my boyfriend committed today. Um, he did Doesn't not... he always... 
<laughs> this is now a crime pod. Well, hi, welcome to Serial. Um, I'm a cop, and I'm arresting my boyfriend. Um, and you're the first to hear I've about been it. Undercover this whole time. <laughs> yeah. So if you're playing along with that podcast bingo sheet that they posted on Twitter this past week, <laughs> then hi, add this part. So today, my for dinner, my boyfriend and I were having hot dogs um, because we're. <laughs> 12, apparently. Weird enunciation. (laughs) No, shut up. Um, (laughs) And I asked my boyfriend why he made me two hot dogs when (laughs) I only can eat one. Because gluten-free hot dog buns are the driest thing on the planet Earth. (laughs) Um, Sahara Desert. But, like, for real, though. So he was like, well, I crave... A sausage. And I was like, okay. Um, and... <laughs> I hate where this is going. No, you don't, you don't even understand. It was basically what he said was that sauce... He... Could he, I can't even, I can't even describe it. It was so criminal, what he said. Um, he was eating the sausage, and I asked him why he wanted it so badly and then he said that it was what he was like made to eat um (laughs) and it was the the most disgusting thing i've ever heard and that he was supposed to eat it because like guy fieri made it will you please explain to me what the fuck you said about sausage earlier because i'm trying to explain it and it's a crime and i'm so pissed off i can't explain it so, Don't come near me. I'm upset with you. There's a microphone <laughs> that I assume I need to be in proximity of. Why are you, like, sitting on the bed, but you're, like, not touching it? Why? Who are you? <laughs> this is a great visual gag for your podcast. <laughs> Thank you. It's Go. Just great. explain. That's a I described <laughs> hot dogs as a very geometrically satisfying meal. <laughs> to be fair, you were the one who started this by saying that you just felt very satisfied. <laughs> no, shut up. By the hot dog. I did nothing wrong. Dinner. Just, I'm just going to say you're the first one to use the term satisfaction in relation to the to the big Italian sausage <laughs> that was inside of you. And uh, <laughs> I did nothing. <laughs> so Stop. I just talked about it. It's like, you know, it's just, it, it, you know, it's a tube that just very much fits <laughs> in your hole. And then it's just very <laughs> easy to, it just, it, it, it feels very appropriate. <laughs> Oh my god! How did Guy Fieri get into this? If I if I remember the riff correctly, if I remember the rest of it, I believe what transpired from there was something about me saying, "Well, I'm going to use those sausages later," and you were like, "Mm-hmm." Oh and I yeah. Was like, I mentioned that I was like, well, <laughs> I'm just going to eat them. And no, like, you said uh-huh. you were going to get them. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> mm-hmm. Go and on. then I was like, if I was going to like shove these up my butt, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> and then you were like, oh, well, you know, I'll be sloppy. I can't believe and this And I'd be like, happening. no, she's a frozen one. And now that I'm saying this out loud, the frozen, the part about these being frozen or thawed, not pertinent <laughs> to the conversation whatsoever. Oh, it's so Because really what, what this... I think what you, the reason you have to be in here was just because, like, at some point when we were talking about the perspective of using these sausages in that manner, I was just like, yeah, take me to Flavor Town. Oh my god. And shortly afterwards, referred to myself as the sauce boss, which I'm not sure is a Guy Fieri thing. Get the it fuck out of my face. Like a, a little bit of like a, a barbecue sauce thing, but yeah, you're, you're welcome. I'll expect the check in the mail. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> That's what it's like living with him every day. <laughs> <I'm crying. laughs> I don't like to kink shame the love of my life, but what the fuck is this? <laughs> we make it very clear on this podcast we're not here for kink shaming. Whatever you want to do, as long as it's not hurting anybody. <laughs> That is a moral offense. 
<laughs> that is a crime against man. That's a criminal crime. I'm calling the police. They're <laughs> on their way. I'm calling the FBI. <laughs> no, please do. Please do. <laughs> because those Costco sausages were not made for that. No. Oh, <sighs> no. Okay. That's not what God put him on this earth for. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, welcome oh to Into God. the Twilight. Please yeah. don't shove frozen sausages up your butt. Um, if you take one lesson away from this podcast. Flavor Town is not for your asshole. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> we actually have some more relevant news than that. Um, yep. <laughs> so, as usual, we have a screen rent corner. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you to you. Um, I, when I was pulling this up for Cody earlier, I had the question of if they do anything other than listicles. Because on when you pull up their website, at the top it's like, movie news, TV news, reviews, yeah. and then it has lists. But, like, <laughs> let's be it's honest. It's all gotta be lists, yeah. It's all lists, right? That's Everything what I Everything mean. is, like, top 20 whatevers, or, like, here's 30 things we don't get about this, or, like, blah, blah, blah. Right. It's all of them. Every single one of them. That's what so, I thought. What's populating all these other <laughs> sections? I just feel like they, they just kind of created these empty articles. But nothing's actually in them when you click on them. It's like onion pieces, you know? <laughs> they just evaporate. Right. So anyways, this is Twilight-based. About 20 colon family things that only true fans know. Um, yeah. And I don't want to speak for Cody. But I don't know that I would consider you a true fan. And I feel like you know most of these things. <laughs> That would be correct on both fronts. Um, one of the things that I feel like most people forget is just the fact that the Collins had a family crest in the movie, and I feel like they did a disservice by not following up on that yeah. throughout the yeah. rest of it. Because the fact that Edward wore that, like, wristband thing of his family crest is just so fascinating to me, personally. Yeah. I will say this photo that's attached with a specific point. Yes. Is hilarious. <laughs> oh, it's it's very like um face on a milk carton. It well yes. Everyone looks very scared and sad and pensive. Yes. But it looks like it just like it's a like a promotional image from the OC. Oh that like too. this just looks like brooding teens. Brooding, wealthy teens that are just going to cause some mischief this summer and get horny, you know? Yeah, they look like they are sleep-deprived and also on drugs. They don't look like right. immortal beings. Yeah, definitely not. Um, and also, <sighs> the depth of focus is so shallow that it's just Edward that's really in focus. Yep. And then everyone is, like, in staggering, like, levels behind him until Jasper's <laughs> completely out of focus. He is gone, though. <laughs> He's just a blurred... <laughs> <laughs> that is just his constant state of being. It's just a blur in the background. Yeah. Fucking Jasper, I love him so much. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, most of these we already know. Um, yeah. There's just... There's just so much. My favorite one of these... Yes. It is number 17. Please. Logan Lerman and Henry Cavill were the first choices to play Edward. Never which forget. Which we knew. But I think it's so fucking funny. Because Henry Cavill could be Logan Lerman's dad. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> they are on the far opposite, like, range of, like, Hollywood dudes. You know what I mean? Agreed. Like, he they both, like, look similar, I guess, because they have dark hair and they're kind of pale. Yes. And that's it. <laughs> but, like, Henry Cavill's this, like, bulky, older dude. Like, right, like you know. And then Logan Lerman was this, like, this fucking tweet, like, dweeb teen. <laughs> I can't believe these were, like, these are, yep, these are two <clears throat> reasonable options that we have for the same person. <laughs> exactly. The, the numbering system on these is so wild, too. Um, I'm glad that there are, are quite a few things on here about Rosalie, which I think is nice. 
Yeah. Um, but the number one, I think, is the weirdest takeaway, because I don't know that you need to be a true fan to know this, um, <laughs> but it's, they have a weird obsession with being married and, quote, completing each other. Again, I don't know that that's a surprise for the average layman that hasn't read this. Um, I mean, maybe they don't know, like, the intricacies of the Cullen family, per se, but I feel like if you just looked at, like, the promotional photos from Breaking Dawn, you can see that people are paired off. Yeah. So it's not that hard to kind of go from there. Right. I just don't know that any of those are surprising. Here's my challenge to you, Screen Rant. Step it the fuck up. Yeah, get some fucking experts up there. I, I believe that there are experts. I just want more nuanced shit. If you're going to bring Listen. us this stuff, like, ooh, 10 years, let's make it relevant again, then give me some new content, is what I'm asking for. Listen, if the money is right, I'll write about Twilight, all right? Ooh. My journalistic integrity can be thrown out the window <laughs> if the cash is good. <laughs> Listen, if I can get two heaters, fuck yeah. <laughs> if I can get a heated blanket. <laughs> ooh. Like a nice one. I know ours is ready it's to go over. kaput. So, <laughs> listen, there isn't, I mean, I'll... We're here. Hey. We're ready. Yeah. Send us an invoice. Send us a W-9. Let's go. <sighs> You're saying Let's a lot of words right now. Road. That's why, listen, I do, I do the, like, content side of this podcast, but Cody does all the goddamn business, because you're saying a <laughs> lot of words right now that I just, like, mm. <laughs> My brain just automatically dissociates you sound like buzzing when you start talking yeah. about that stuff. <laughs> just sound like dial up to me. Just like censoring me. <laughs> yep. This is just makes me go dial up in my brain. <laughs> Let's talk about good noises in the head though. AKA Ooh, the music. Nice transition. Thank you. Of course. We have a really good article to talk about and then a hilariously shitty one to talk about. Yeah. The first one, I guess, is kind of an intro into this topic, is this one from Uprox. Can you just read me the title of this, please? Because it's just <laughs> so bad. It's very bad. It is how the Twilight movies introduced a generation of girls to indie music. <sighs> Which, like, I get this a little bit more, because Ali has a very firm opinion on this, <laughs> which is valid, very valid. I might understand from a perspective that's like, hey... Music like Radiohead and like all the like different bands and stuff might have been seen as inaccessible to young girls because of like masculinity and all these things or whatever. Sure. And weren't seen as like cool, right? Because uh, pop music is for women and like rock music and any music is like not. You know what I mean? Did you say pot music? I said pop. Oh. But... <laughs> Yeah, you know how girls love weed music? I was gonna say, I was like, then Radiohead would fa I yeah. <laughs> Wait a yeah. second. So like Are you saying girls are automatically ways... deadheads? I mean, hey. <laughs> I mean listen. <laughs> listen. Listen. What I'm saying is that like music historically has been very gendered because of the roles at which we ascribed. Um Yes. music in the way that we describe gender as well and those relationships are still very intertwined today yeah exactly. however it is a little silly to be like women have never heard indie music until twilight yes. happened in 2008 agreed it's just wild that they would make such a claim like that yeah to say something because it just it definitely kind of strikes a binary of like Oh, you know what they say. Like, you're either a Kelly Clarkson or you're a David Cook. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. Oh, okay. But, like, what if I want to be a Taylor Hicks? What if I want to be a Carrie Underwood? You know what I mean? <laughs> I really don't know that many other American Idol winners. So, like, this is a <laughs> running kind of short. I think there might be a Jordan Sparks in there. I don't know. <laughs> yep, Jordan Sparks is there. Ooh, I didn't watch that much American Idol. Um, Yo, remember. Uh, fucking David Archuleta came back because he tweeted something like oh the other day, and everyone fucking fell in love with, uh, uh, like about elections, and it was triggering. Holy shit! There was there was a guy named <laughs> his name was the name of a sandwich. <laughs> oh, Ruben! Ruben Stutter. Stutter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we got Clay Aiken. And oh my got, god! Then it was like Justin. 
Guarini was there too. What was the boy? He was just on the <laughs> Wicked thing I just watched. Um, Adam, what's his face? Adam Lambert. Was he? In, hey, welcome to Into the Idol. You know what I mean? Um, hey, here's a very embarrassing fact about me. No, tell me. Um, <laughs> so I loved American Idol growing up. Mm. I watched it for years okay. growing up. It was a very ritual thing with my family. Like, that was our show. Okay. Similar, do you remember those, like, Glee concerts that happened? Oh, do I? So I I went to a similar one that was for American Idol. Oh, <laughs> my God. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they had one it was basically the same thing. Every year they had like a re, like a like a tour that they would go to all these cities with like the top let's say like 10 or something. Oh my god. Of American Idol and I went the year that like Adam Lambert was there because I was gay at the time and didn't know that I was <laughs> in love with Adam Lambert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something clicked. Um, and yeah, so I went to that and it was amazing. <laughs> Probably. I don't remember it, but I feel like I had a great time. That's fair. Holy shit. Yeah. That's so wild. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I thought those were just, like, advertisements but weren't real things that people did. <laughs> they were real. They were very real. Same with, like, Disney on Ice. Like, that's not real, right? <laughs> Nobody actually goes to, like, Disney on Ice. <laughs> right? Same with, like, Cirque du Soleil. Like, that's not real, right? <laughs> They're just billboards. They don't actually... Yeah, it's like, that's things. not real. Like, those are fronts for cults, right? <laughs> They're just drug deals. They're all fucking, um, what's it called? Um, speakeasies. They're all speakeasies. Is Disney on Ice a speakeasy? What the fuck? <laughs> I knew I couldn't trust Walt Disney. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Whoa. It all makes so much more sense now. Honestly, this episode has taken so many <laughs> Okay, um, the reason why we started talking about Uproxx, okay, in this shitty article is because, yeah. listen, this is why we don't do night pods anymore, folks. Things get buck wild. We should have known. It's true. Um, yeah. The reason why we started talking about this is because of the actual article we want to talk about, Billboard. So they yeah, did yeah. this article called, it's a listicle, called The 20 Best Original Twilight Songs Ranked. So I want to get your thoughts on this because, as we've talked about so many times before, the Twilight Saga has bops on bops. Like, it's all yeah. so good. And so to be able to, like, rank it is just rude, first of all. Yeah. So I'm I'm very curious about this. This, this has some of my favorite artists on here of all time and songs in general. So do you have some original, like, thoughts right off the bat? Um, well, I love... That my queen, Haley Williams, is just right up front at number two. Yes. Um, Thank God. Um, here's a fucking question, though. Who the fuck is Supermassive Black Hole? That's what I wanted to ask you about. Like, how is... What the fuck is happening? That's so the number iconic. one is a Muse song, but it's a fucking... Who fucking cares? It's another song that was for New Moon or whatever. Sorry. Right. Sorry. I'm. If that's the only song, it's it's the most iconic song. So to not put it on there is yeah. an injustice. Um, on any part of this list, it's not on the entire list. It's off brand, also too. Yeah. Um, Criminal. I'm as much as I personally enjoy the Black Keys. I'm surprised they put Chop and Change so high up. Um, it's very high. It's yeah. very high. I'm also surprised at how relatively low a thousand years is i feel like that's like the peop the song that people are like very emotionally attached to yeah that's the one that i feel like people are like they you know people use it like they're like, associated with it yeah they use it like their weddings and stuff <laughs> but yeah it's like halfway into the list which is wild <laughs> i'm it's honestly criminal that carter burwell's Com like composition for Bella's Lullaby is literally almost off the list. It's at 15, <laughs> and like, I'm gonna fucking fight someone. That's disgusting. <laughs> it's the only composition on this whole fucking list. And like, Carter Burwell, no, no, stop, because <laughs> I already know the face you're making. He went off on these compositions this whole time, and that's the only one that they're gonna put on here this whole time. He's not gonna, they're, they're not gonna put Love Death for <laughs> I fucking hate it. I don't understand. Oh, I know nothing about music. I pretend like I know a lot about compositions, but I get fucking heated about them. And so to only put that one on there is disgusting. 
Anyways. I just need everyone to know that I lied about my heating being turned on. It's just being, pa- my radiator is being powered just by Allie's fuse <laughs> and white hot rage. That's it's just fair. channeling this energy and heating my home. That's fair. Honestly, that's fair. Yeah, anyway, the bands on here are really good. Like, if you, yeah. honestly, if you've Flash. been listening to our whole podcast for the past two years and you haven't listened to the Twilight soundtracks yet, what are you doing? Like, with the, stop, stop, like, pause the podcast. I get that it might feel shameful to have that that album art just, like, staring at your face. But go do something else and listen to it yeah. at the same time. Do a little private browser session Spotify. No one has to know. I did not know where you were going with that sentence for a second. And just <laughs> treat yourself, you know? Yes, also that. I think we have some questions here. Yeah. We got one that was just more of a comment that said, um, <laughs> are we ready to be finally freed of <laughs> this god-awful trilogy um, right, now that we're you. moving on to our last book here, which, <sighs> I mean, for me, yes. Um, yeah. Even though we still have what? We have, is it two books from Christian's perspective? Yeah. One? I Two? I Yeah. Yikes. It's two. Yeah. Ugh. No. At least. They might make another. Kill me. And then we got a question here from one of our patrons, Rachel. Would you like to read this? Yeah. Great. Uh, they said, I always thought it was weird that Bella planned to basically say goodbye to her family forever after she was turned instead of, oh, instead of just like claiming she got plastic surgery or something when followed Edward crazy skincare routine. IDK, it didn't make sense to me when I read it the first time as a small tween. What do y'all think, or am I missing a bigger point here? Thanks. So this is a good point. And I think that was more so a Stephanie Meyer thing. Yeah. Rather than a Carlyle is probably an expert in that area <laughs> kind of thing. Sure. So she was like, no, families have to be separated forever. But I feel like if, I mean, if I would have done it, actually I probably would have just been like deuces. <laughs> like... I'm definitely yeah, I, dead. Yeah, I think it was just more of like a safety thing, mm-hmm. right? It was just like, I we want to make sure that you're protected. We want to make sure that Charlie's protected. It, these relationships, like while it worked for like you and Edward or whatever for a bit, like those are very rare circumstances and it probably won't work with like a familial context. Like, yeah, it's probably just best that you're with other vampires just because like, that's how it'd be, you know? Yes. Yeah, I think the way that it was justified was that there had been no other evidence to prove that it was safe otherwise. Right, And so it was better to go with the known than the unknown in that context. Um, But yeah, I that's a great skincare routine, so it's worth trying it. We have a new book to be reading. Um, Could you, I know that we've already read through the first two chapters, but could we do some predictions about... What in the hell is this one going to be about? I have no, I have no clue. I could literally throw a dart at the wall. I have no goddamn <laughs> idea. I, I yeah, it could I have got just a wedding. I got possible murder, like espionage situation. Exactly. Those are the only things that I know are coming. I don't know how they come. I don't know when they come. I don't know what's happening. Agreed. Just that's the worst. I agree. Yes, so this prologue, as usual, E.L. James does her flashbacks to Christian's perspective. And they, they're they so cringy, folks. Yep. They're very bad, especially because they're trying to be written from small Christian's perspective. And yep. so I don't like reading from a traumatized four- or five-year-old's perspective. Um, yeah. It's very bad. And I don't like it. <laughs> reasonable. Reasonable. And also, it's just very poorly written. Like, I just don't... It's bad. It's all bad. Yep. And so that's, again, our usual prologue, um, giving us more context into how Christian's mother died and, like, what he was doing to self-soothe and also survive during that time. Not good stuff, folks. Not good. <laughs> he was eating a lot of random stuff from the freezer to survive. Chapter one... <laughs> Okay, like, (laughs) this book is so bad. Um, It's, like, I can't even begin to describe how worse this is from anything we've read before. Already. Yep. Like, it's so bad. Yep. It's so much worse, like, on every emotional and abusive front. It's worse written-wise. It's horrible. Like, we've seen some vile shit. 
And this is so bad. I was like, my jaw was on the floor with how bad the shit I was reading was. I agree. One of the things that struck me the most in just the first, like, two paragraphs of this first chapter was it felt like E.L. James was learning how to write for the first time. And she was like, hey, I learned this new fancy thing called a flashback. Let me show everyone in the world how to use it. I am a sudden expert on it, even though it's my first time. And it feels so rough and so disjointed and also so obvious that as a reader, it pulled me out of the experience, for sure. This first chapter starts off with them on their honeymoon in the Mediterranean, and it's the most boring scene of just the two of them reading out on the beach, which, like, seems nice. Don't get me wrong. Right, sure. But also, like... They're probably having a great time. Yes. I'm happy for them, or whatever. But then it's... Anna falls back into a flashback because she's, like, sitting back, like, I doze in the sun, like, I'm idly remembering about his proposal, and then it's just so many ellipses, and it's like, we get it, like... You're transferring us into a flashback. You also included, like, the little, like, swirly thing. Like, we get it. Right. Like, it's very... I'm there. I'm I got here. it. We are, we are here. And so that's when things get bad and very quickly do so. It kind of puts us right back where the last book left off with his proposal. Yeah. He's like, Vegas, now? <laughs> and... Let's get hitched, baby. Yeah. Um, And so it it kind of turns out exactly like Breaking Dawn um, with their conversation, which is what I took down in my notes, is it it feels exactly like Breaking Dawn, where he's like, you have a month, and that's all I'm waiting. Um, My mother has a month to put this together, um, but after that, you're mine, rawr. Um, (sighs) And it's just like, okay. (laughs) like. And the way that, like, Anna's phrasing it, she's always like, oh my god, we've already spent so much time together. Like, what's another, you know, couple months or whatever, right? (sighs) But y'all been together for, like, a month. Yep. It said it had been (sighs) weeks at that point. Um, I think, what did we say last podcast? It had been, like, a couple weeks? Two weeks? Like, five. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I think it had been, like, just a couple weeks or something. Like, a handful. And then she flashes back forward again to the present. Where right. Christian is talking about her being or being afraid she'll burn out in the sun. And Anna idly asks, since they're in Monaco, um, how he would feel if she went topless like everyone else on the beach. Uh, because that is a very common thing that happens outside of the U.S. And shockingly enough for Christian, he does not like that. Now, Cody, this is the part where you shared your <sighs> thoughts about the book on Twitter. Can you delve into what you were thinking at this time? It's fucking horrible. Let me pull up the actual quote, because I'm gonna, like, I, I, I need everyone to know that this was real and this was written. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, no. He's like, no, whatever. And they're playing it off as something that's super, like, like, how they always do, which is, like, oh, my God, like, he's so, like, argumentative. It's, like, hot. And it's, like, no, this is abuse. This is horrible. Yeah. And then he, like, slaps her on the ass and is, like, you'll do, wench. He calls her a wench. Like, it's the fucking 16th century. What is happening? I can't, and it's like, everyone is like, oh, this is so cute. Love is real. I love it. They're having a beautiful vacation. What the fuck is happening? What? It makes no sense. And he's like, my eyes only. Like, your body is mine only. Which, again, disgusting. Gross. And then her body, her inner goddess is like, fuck yeah, I'm into it. It sucks. This is so bad. And it just doesn't seem accurate that all of a sudden she's just like go she's like joking around but she's not because she's like hey 
She's I'm like, for real though. <laughs> yeah, because she's like, hey, I'm really happy that the dynamic that we have is helping me figure out the confidence that I have in my body. Yeah. How do how would you feel if I went topless? I don't need to ask, but like how would you feel? And then he shuts her down and the reaction that E.L. James portrays with that is her being like, oh, Christian, my possessive, jealous, control freak Christian. And it's like, that's, no, no, no? Yeah, it's also just a poor characterization of Anna, right? Because yep. she would have been like, no, fuck you. Like, exactly. If I want to take off my top, I'll take off my top. Like, yeah, she often does the thing where, like, she lets him get away with, like, a lot of shit that he shouldn't. But, like, she's still very equally argumentative and equally, like, standing up for her own self and beliefs exactly. in some ways. It just doesn't make any sense. Yep. Um, so it's very bad. Then, um... I think Christian tries to fuck her in the ocean, kind of. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's the worst thing I've ever read. He thinks, he, like, teases her that he's going to, and then he just, like, throws her into the sea. Right. <laughs> Um, I, 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 I was reading it and I'm like, am I really going to fucking read these two people fuck in the ocean where there's like a beach full of people just like watching? Nope. And I didn't, thank God. No, nope. but the fact that he was like, oh, well, people are watching. The paparazzi are watching. I can't just fuck you in the ocean. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Christian, no one's going to fuck someone in the ocean. <laughs> there's yeah, that's people so here. Bad. You can't just do that. So he does all this, like, quote, playful stuff in her eyes. She gets back onto her chair up on the beach, and she's like, you know what? Fuck you, Christian. She lays down with her stomach on the on the sand and takes her top off. It's like she's tanning her back. Like, what? That's not, that's so normal. Um, yep. And she throws her top on his, like, sun chair and then she goes back to sleep. Like, that's a mood. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I'm there. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so then it flashes back again to the wedding day. Which, again, hi, have you read Breaking Dawn? Then you don't need to read this. It's the same exact no. thing. Um, like, line for line. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yes. It's just that instead of, like, more greens and in the woods, it's at... The Cullen family house, and it's pink. That's it. That's the only differences that have happened. The only other things that have happened here that are different, obviously, we have Jose there. He doesn't turn into a wolf. Um, that would be a very wild shift to happen in the third book here with no context. Um, so that doesn't happen. Yeah. Because what? That would be... <laughs> Thankfully, that's not where E.L. James starts to completely... Um, continue her copying. Um, but that's about it. Like, I find the marriage scene really boring, personally. I it's, like, so skimmed over, like, it's like nothing happens. Yep. There's no... Co I Again, the one... Compl I mean, I have many complaints about this whole series. But the one thing that really grinds my gears is, like, this should be reeking of opulence. Yes. Right? Like, if this is a guilty pleasure, and I'm supposed to be having a good time, and, like, reading this on a beach or, like, a vacation, and, like, having a guilty pleasure doing it, right? Yes. I want to be dripping in gold. I want to feel like this is just, like, is decadent, right? Mm hmm And I'm getting none of that. Even though there's this premise that there's so much money involved, there's this guise of wealth, it is never, ever, ever shown or utilized, ever. Yep. And I'm, it's just boring. I'm so bored. Like, I can't believe I have to compare any, I have to look at any other wedding scene now, now that I've seen the Crazy Rich Asians wedding scene, because that's, yep. that's it. That's how you fucking do it, folks. Like, that's it. And that's exactly what I was thinking of when I was reading this, and I was like, are you kidding me? This could have been so extra, and yeah. this is what you went for? What else are we doing here? If not to get a fucking, like, fantasy escape, right? And, like, mm -hmm. just dive into the world of, like, wealthiness and opulence for a bit. And <sighs> corny sexy time or whatever. Right. And I know that there's a part of it that E.L. James is trying to, like, have Christian be like, Fuck you, paparazzi. 
I don't want right. you to know anything about me. But also, they're going, just like every other paparazzi does with any sort of celebrity wedding, they're going to find their way in because Loki the celebrities want them at the wet. Like, if they, they're going to find their way in if people want them to be there, right? Yeah. Right. And so, like, why not just lean into it and make it as close to a royal wedding as you can then? Why not have all the gifts be donated to your fucking charity, Christian? Like, right. that's, why not make it a big deal and promote your image if that's what you're so into? I don't know. It just, it felt so disappointing that the only thing that felt like opulence to him was the the plane that they were flying in. And he was like, oh yeah, I want to have us fly at 35,000 feet on our wedding night. And like, it, it was nothing. It was nothing. The whole yeah. thing. Yeah, I was super bored by all of it, if I'm being honest. Yeah. When Anna wakes up from this little flashback, that she's having. Christian is pissed. <sighs> and she's like, and I was like, crap, crap, crap. He's mad. He's really mad. And that's where chapter one ends. Yep. So chapter two begins and she realizes that she's like on her front. At some point during her like nap, she has switched over on her side. Um, normal. That happens. And Christian's pissed he like throws her top at her and tells her to like get up and put it on and that they're like leaving and the reason why he says all this is he's like everyone's looking taylor's looking security's looking the paparazzi's looking and making her feel like even though this body that he talks about all the time is perfect it's supposed to be for hers alone and that if anyone ever looks at it like her value is soiled yeah and it's so gross (laughs) It's the fucking worst. Yeah, it makes me feel very uncomfortable. It's, like, I can't believe this was written so recently. Yep. It's that appalling. And I'm very curious to see if this translates to the movie, because so far we see that the movie is a little less fucking horrible in terms of, like, some of the takes it takes. Mm Mm-hmm. But, like, it just seems so distant from any form of human decency that we've learned over the past, like, ages of rom-coms, and even since Twilight came out. Yes. Like, even since we've kind of learned from that whole period of time that, like, oh, maybe we should treat women (laughs) with respect and write them differently and write our relationships with women differently and write our men's relationships with women Mm -hmm. women differently. Right. And all these things. And it's just so far removed from that that it's just, like, it's so antiquated and, like, horrific. Yeah, it doesn't even, with most scenes where Christian is doing this, I try to see where E.L. James is coming from. Right. Because oftentimes she's trying to do it of, like, in our society, these masculine aspects are seen, like, these possessive aspects are seen as possessive. And that is often equated with, like, being attractive. Right? That's what, that is what society is taught. And so that is what I try to keep in mind as reading is like, this is not what is attractive to me, but that is what has been put into my head for right. what is being attractive. But when I read stuff that's currently like we're right at this moment, I'm 30 pages into this and nothing about this is attractive to me. Like yeah. he is not doing anything that is like screaming husband to me. Right. And that's, that's really frustrating. Like, he's just making her feel really embarrassed and ashamed of her body. And that's not, that's not personally what I would want out of a husband. No. It's just really frustrating and sad. So he throws his life jacket on her and tells her that they're leaving and going back to the yacht that they've been spending their honeymoon on. The only thing that seems more characteristic of Christian than making her feel ashamed of her body is that Taylor goes to go get the yacht and meet him on this jet ski that apparently they have to drive out to the yacht. And while Christian is driving this yet yet ski, yeah, sure, (laughs) um, to the yacht, he, like, misses the yacht and continues, like, playing on the jet ski and going out. Like a child. Like an actual child. um, And heading out towards the open water and, like, spraying the sea spray everywhere and stuff. And it just felt very 
characteristic, I would say, of Christian. Yeah. Not necessarily in a good way, just like, mm. this is just, how is how have the two things of him in the same person and just happened in like the same five minute span, I guess. And also the fact that that moment, Anna describes it as him acting his age for once. Yes. Which I thought was really interesting. Because in that moment, he is acting like a child. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I guess she's so dis- disillusioned by the fact that he's always acting like a professional businessman. And he's actually younger. He's just like a young spring chicken and whatever. But it's like, motherfucker, if this is how you feel like your husband, your adult man husband, is going to act, like, it's over. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I don't understand what he was... I just, everything about yeah. it is so frustrating. Um, so they get back to the yacht. They start having drinks, and he starts being like, hey, so um, have a drink, and also don't piss, because I'm yeah. going to have sex with you. And <laughs> you know how it is. You know. You know how we do. <laughs> it's great. And then they um, they do the sex thing. Yeah. Here. With handcuffs? <laughs> with handcuffs. Yeah, but not before they, she does that flashback about the prenup. Um, Oh my god, yeah. (laughs) Which was a wild inclusion of Christian being very adamantly anti-prenup, which doesn't seem accurate for his character to me, but. Yeah. Like, with all of his abandonment issues and, like, creating everything he owned, he's just willing to throw that away with the first person that comes. Yeah. Into his life? I don't know. That just seemed weird to me. Um, but yeah, so they have the sex, um, and they do so with handcuffs this time. And Anna seems to like it, question mark? Yeah. Because um, she kind of falls asleep and stuff, and then like after an hour or so, um, wakes up to go pee. And she's like has a robe on as she's walking over to the bathroom, and then the chapter ends with her looking at herself in the mirror and asking what Christian did to her, and we don't really know what she means by that, other than everything, (laughs) like, (laughs) other than what has he done except for everything at that point. But that's where it ends, so next week we have chapters three and four to go off of, I can only hope that it gets better from here, but if I'm being realistic, I doubt that. This week, um, we thought we would go back to our roots and thank <laughs> our patrons um, with reductress article titles. Hell the fuck, yeah. Yeah, I thought that'd be pretty good. So I would love to thank Shannon Clearwater, um, one of our fantastic patrons. I'm going to have her be this article title, which is inspiring. This woman got over her crush by listening to him speak. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Shout out to Katie Weber. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be five. Thank you. Who's going to be five stylish coats to hold for your friends while they dance. Oh, I love that. Damn. And <laughs> I'm going to. Give a huge shout out to Simon Steele, who is going to be how to tell your friend you're proud of her boring little achievement. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And Cody, could you choose one that explains your week so far for me, please? Oh, God. Mine's definitely going to be how to rock an oversized sweater so it looks hot and not like it doesn't fit. (laughs) God, fuck. I was about to choose that one. Okay. um, (laughs) So then... I'm gonna choose uh, make him not so hard he is supernaturally forced to lip sync Belafonte's Deo. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's, yep, I feel like that kind of explains itself, if I'm being honest. Okay, so I have a fan fiction for you today. Thank god. I don't think I've done this one. Okay. I'm pretty sure I haven't done this one. <laughs> um, it is was written by Factor Fiction 96. And I can only imagine that Factor Fiction 69 was taken, but who knows. The summary of this, oh, sorry, the title of this is Fifty Shades, the poem. And the summary is just a short poem summarizing the Fifty Shades trilogy. Great. Um, And it was published on February 10th of last year. (sighs) 
Okay. Are you ready? No, I guess. Okay. Um, disclaimer, I don't own Fifty Shades. Fifty Shades of Fucked Up, that's what I am. Abuse is a child, sadist of a man. Fifty Shades of Fucked Up, that's what he is. Stick to the rules or let out a painful hiss. Fifty Shades of Fucked Up, that's what I am. In my red room of pain or in the glider I land. Fifty Shades of Fucked Up, that's what he is. Secrets to tell, all of them his. Fifty Shades of Fucked Up, that's what I am. Falling in love, becoming a different man. Fifty Shades of Fucked Up, he wants to change. Red lines of lipstick, Jack's actions are strange. Fifty Shades of Fucked Up, I can be what she wants. Flowers and chocolates, helicopter crash that will haunt. Fifty Shades of Fucked Up, he becomes what I want. (laughs) The boss who deceives, the father he's not. Fifty Shades of Fucked Up, I'm scared of the change. A man angry at the past, my feelings deranged. And there's more, but I'm going to stop it because of spoilers. So, end yeah, scene. Yeah, spoilers. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> snaps, everyone. Snaps. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Snap, snaps, snaps, snaps. Snaps, 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 snaps. Wow. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, you know, it's kind of beautiful, you know? Um <laughs> Um, I think we can all kind of think about it as we move into <laughs> NaNoWriMo, you know what I mean? Oh my god. Well, you know, as we say here in Seattle. Give it! And, you know, um, get yourself whipped. <laughs> you know what? Go get yourself whipped. <laughs> Just get do it. whips. <laughs> and, and get whipped, you know what I mean? Just do it all. This is an Earbud Media production. You can find us on Twitter at Earbud Media and listen to the rest of our shows. You can find this show on Twitter at Into the Twilight, as well as Into the Twilight.show. You can send us an email at Into the Twilight Show at gmail.com. You can also become a sponsor of the show or buy some merch at Into the Twilight.bigcartel.com. Our art is done by Maddie Padilla, who you can find at Your Ghost Host 44 on Instagram, and our music is done by Eli Krauss, you can find at Eli Sauerkraus and Krausfilms.com. The intro and outro is by KB Smith, you can find it kb underscore underscore smith on twitter you can find ally on twitter at into wild places and you can find me at dyke discourse you've been listening to earbud media production earbud media audio for everyone